Well, speaking of the president, there are so many moving parts on the foreign affairs front for the Trump administration in 2018. So we want to talk about that in a minute. Joining me is international relations expert Yvonne Davis, no stranger to the show. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, glad to have you here. And I said we want to talk about 2018 in a minute because I, I at least want to start with 2017 and sort of give out his grade. Now, I, I think the big knock on his foreign policy up to this point yes. was that it was somewhat disjointed and maybe impulsive. That being said... Incoherent, disjointed foreign policy. Yes. Uh, especially if with the European allies, they were appended. They didn't understand what he was talking about regarding our withdrawal from the Paris Agreement on climate yeah. change, the whole Trans-Pacific Partnership in, in Asia in terms of pulling out of trade, and just keeping people, like, sort of on the edge, which it yeah. seems like he governs our nation the right. same way. Yeah, that's so what he that's wants been. to do. But, but on, some wins. But he's, but he's had some wins. Yeah. I mean, when you look at what he did April 4th, when Bashar al-Assad uh, used sarin gas and killed 80 Syrians, 80 people. He went and sent 59 missiles mm -hmm. at, and to an Air Force base, and there hasn't been any other incident since that time. So he put a, a, a stop to that. And that was the first time I recall everybody saying, hey, this was his first big presidential moment. He, absolutely. He said it was an affront to humanity, mm -hmm. and he responded immediately. So there was an immediate response. There wasn't a red line issue. He decided to do it. Yeah. And so that was a big win in that regard, although Russia did give him permission to do this airspace to go in there and, and, and launch the missiles, yeah. it's still nothing has happened since. What about ISIS? How much of that is attributable to well, him? Well, you look at it from this standpoint. When you look at the sort of the special operation forces strategy that yeah. came under the Obama administration, but what he did differently is he really ramped it up aggressively mm -hmm. with the allies in the region, and he was able to successfully drive ISIS from once having 30,000 square uh, miles of, of control and power down to about 15,000 square miles at this point. You know, muscle, where ICE had built up his $2 billion a chest of, uh, yeah. of financial power. Now, Iraq, the Iraqi forces, with the help of the United States, the Peshmerga and Turkey, were able to take back the power there in that country, and then Raqqa when it fell in October. So right now, ISIS is on the run, and mm -hmm. ISIS has not been able to mount its power like it used to. So they have sort of, they've went back into hiding, and, and they're thinking about what to do next. So you have to give credit to where it's due. Yeah. Also, too, in that regard, president allowed his generals and his national security team to take charge and allow them to make the decision about what to do, as the same with Afghanistan. Now, moving forward to 2018, North Korea, it looks like at this point it's been a bit of brinksmanship on both sides. The rhetoric's gone up. Where do we go from there? Well, you hear the situation. You have the Winter Games coming up in Seoul yeah. uh, pretty soon. And so tomorrow there's a meeting between North Korea and South Korea talking about the Olympics and sending a delegation to compete in the Games. But we suspect that there might be more discussion in relation to dialing down the rhetoric. There's yeah. been a hotline that's been open, and so there's communication that we hope that something will take place. That, that's been a bit of a goal for Moon Jae-in. when uh, That was part of his campaign promises, uh, from what I understand, to try to thaw things out to some degree, right? Yes, and yeah. it, he to, to try to do that, but here's the thing with Kim Jong-un's mind. It could be that he might be more advanced with his nuclear weapon than we think, so now he feels he can flex and have power. Mm -hmm. As I've said on, your sh on this program before, and others, I've talked about the idea that Kim Jong-un would love to be the one to be able to deal with the armistice situation to create peace between North and South Korea. He'd yeah. like to be the broker-dealer. Yeah. The United States did cooperate by suspending military exercises in the interim, but they are looking at this with a cautious eye, of course. Last thing, how does China figure in with this uh, with regards to the Trump administration? Well, China will Korea. continue its, its one Silk Belt Road uh, process in terms of... Uh, of having power, but China is still playing a critical role in North Korea mm -hmm. and the South China Sea. The issue of Taiwan, watch what's happening in Taiwan. The tension between Taiwan and China is there because he does, the China does not like the relationship that's growing. The also, too, China's in, injecting itself more in the Middle East peace process. We have to look at a lot of things. There's the election with Russia coming up in yep. March. He's going to get reelected. He doesn't care about the investigation that's happening in the United States. He wants to annex more countries. Mm -hmm. Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus. He wants to take over to make Mother Russia great again. So that's what we're looking at. 
at right now. Terrorism on the rise still, mm -hmm. even though ISIS is still present, the FBI is looking at lone wolf and homegrown terrorism. Yeah. Um, Self-radicalization. You may not see big plans for big bombings, but you're still going to continue to see car ramming, stabbing, shootings, etc. cetera. Uh, the make a, a homemade bomb in your mother's kitchen. That yeah. will continue. Yeah. And on soft targets, unfortunately. And that is really as much of a domestic issue. 1,500 terrorist attacks in 2017. 1,500. Around the world. How does that relate to other years? Do we know? It's actually been a decrease okay. from last year in 2016. 25,000 lives uh, were lost. Um, by June of this year, there was about six or 7,000. So it's been somewhat of a decrease. Okay. But we still so, have to be on the guard here, be vigilant, ever vigilant when it comes to issues like that. Uh, decrease down to yes, about four or five exactly. a day. All right, thank you, Yvonne. Thank you so much. Great to have you back. Happy New Year.